and a championship in Yana Watmere, but we'll see what happens. Five red lights. Luke Smith leading the way in towards turn number one, and we are green in Abu Dhabi. Luke Smith getting off the line very well on his set of the soft compound of tyres. Yana Watmere with a flying start, looking up the inside of Valentin Brufair. Ishmael Fassi as well on his set of the soft compound of tyres is all over the back of the Flying Dutchman as they approach turn number five for the very first time. This very late breaking zone could invite Ishmael to go up the inside and make his way into P4 and indeed he does at the end of the first sector Luke Smith leading the way head of Tom Manley Indeed, we can see that Ishmael Fassi now making a move to get himself into third position ahead of Van Seen. Brufair, brilliant move. And now Yona Watme looking to get himself ahead of Van Seen as well in towards turn six. Can he get himself ahead of Ishmael? No, he can't. But he does clear one of the Williamses as they head through. Now in towards that chicane up the hill, down towards turn on. We can see Thomas Ronhar losing positions behind his teammates, being E. Cabana. And also we can see someone at the back having a bit of a spin. That might oh, be dear. Patrick C. Pass. Oh, Philip Pressure to come into a bit of contact somewhere, and Philip's got no front wing here, Danny. He's, he's obviously hit someone, and now he's got no front wing to use at all. Oh, but Thomas Ronhart all the way down in P9. This is not good for him in this race. It's certainly not, as we can see. Tamaskal to the inside of Valentin Brufair into turn one. Brilliant move from the Hungarian. Now we can see Ike Bena looking to gain to get a move done ahead of the Williams, but Valentin will be fighting on the back of Tamaskal still as they head into turn five to the outside. Goes the Williams. Can he find a move back round? No, he can't, but it will be the inside for Ike Bena gets the move completed. Ruben Progenio also up the inside of Valentin Brufair. They go side by side on the exit at turn five. But I think that move is done and dusted. In order to charge up the grid, we can see Tamashkano up the inside of Jan Watmir. Backs off to get the DRS and then we'll go for it down that straight in towards turn numbers. It's got the, uh, uh, he's got a decent exit. He's got the DRS to use, of course, down towards this next break. His own DRS is open. Passes the Mercedes before he even gets the DRS open. We can see Cabana looking to get in as well. He pulls to the inside of Jan Watmir. Can he pull to the inside of Tamashkano? Now he backs off and he keeps Jan to his inside to his outside as they head into the breaking zone. So moves being made for Ika and Tamash and Ney. Rupert Progenio looking to gain in here on the back of Yarno. He's got the DRS, of course. Got a bit of battery to use. Pulls to the outside. Pulls himself just ahead now of Yarno Mia and gets that move secure. And Yarno didn't really look to fight that because he knows for a fact he is a little bit slower on those tyres at the moment. Heading in towards turn number five for Richard and also with a time penalty for multiple warnings and into the pit lane. Uh, interesting strategy going on for him here today. Ishmael Fassi looking close on oh. Tom Manley. Here's Tamash Gao with the move and Tom Manley's left the session. What's happened there? It must be some sort of internet oh, lag because he's, no. yeah, he's ghosted. He's dropped behind. Big, big shame here for Tom Manley. He's dropped. And now Yano is on the attack. He's closing to the rear of Ruben Pedreño in towards turn at number six. Luke Smith and Ishmael Fassi swap once again. Here comes Tamash Gao through on Icabena and it looks like they're going to go three wide. Yano on here. Oh, a little bit of contact with Tamash Gao as he slides over to the right hand side. Icabena almost caught uh, completely off the circuit. Somehow, some way, they've come off with no contact. Well, no damage whatsoever. Now, Jan Ormir closing to the back of Tamash Gao, who almost ended his race right there and then. That was a very much, very much a heart and mouth moment. Here comes Thomas Ronha looking up the inside. Still three wide in towards the final sector. These are crucial tenths of a second. He will be losing sat behind his rivals if he can't get through. And Jan Ormir is going to be stretching that advantage. But there it is. Thomas Ronha up ahead of Icabena this time. But it seems he's not using much batch. So maybe he's not going to be looking to make the moves we can see Ishmael and Luke swap for the lead. As we can see, Yonot Mir looking to take third away from Thomas Gal, and he does so brilliant there from Thomas Ronha. And Ika Bain a fight with his teammate there. Not something we expect Whoa. to see between the two Sabres. And Ika went a bit too deep. Yon to, uh, Thomas back ahead as they head back down towards turn nine. Yeah, well, why is Ika Bain disrupting his own teammate's plan? You can see that was a thrust of the steering wheel. Anger from Thomas Ronha there. Not happy that his own teammate, Ika Bain, putting the challenge to him. Able to put the permutations as simple as possible. If Jan Watmir beats Thomas Ronha here today, then he is your season 16 champion. Uh, Ishmael Fassi in a very difficult position at this moment in time, of course. He has to finish a minimum of fifth place in this Grand Prix to still be in the title hunt. Now Luke Smith into the pit lane. We'll see what he is able to do on the hard compound of tires. It's all about focusing on your title rival. Uh, it doesn't actually matter if Jarno or Thomas win at this race. Unless Ishmael Fassi is in a race winning position, then yeah, it's a little bit of a concern. Ishmael now into the pit lane. We'll see if he opts for a set of the hards. I'd imagine so with Ikebeno also into the pit lane. That will leave the Flying Dutchman leading this race ahead of Thomas Ronhart. How about the two Ferraris as well? Nicholas Longe in third. 
fourth place for Barry Borum and Jake Benham in fifth. All these guys starting right at the back of the order. They're having a great time of it at the minute. Gets himself involved, but that gap there between Ishmael Fassi and the leader is nearly 10 seconds. So that gap has come down quite considerably. We've got pit stops. Jona Watmir and Nicholas Longa both into the pit lane here. So Thomas has the lead ahead of Barry Burramand, and we'll see where about say drop three, but they will be quite far back considering Nishman Fassi Dan has only just come through the final corner. Yeah, and so that is the undercut being activated by both Jan Watmir and Nicholas Longay. Thomas Ronard choosing to go longer, and Barry Burramand, of course, with no choice in that regard to the fact that he would be double stacking with Nicholas Longay. So we'll see how that works out coming towards the end of this race. As you said, Ishmael Fassi will be the net race leader in this Grand Prix. Where will Jan Watmir and Nicholas Longay emerge? It looks to be just about ahead, maybe behind of Jed Norgrove, side by side Ooh. between Jan Watmir and Jed Norgrove in towards turn number five, Jan Watmir with that inside line, he might concede that position, never mind, it'll go right up the inside of Jed Norgrove off the exit of the corner, that was a hairy moment there, could have ended in tears for the Flying Dutchman who is now all over the back and to the inside of Jed, he is looking to be mean, lean and fighting earlier on here in this medium stint up the inside of Valentin Brufer and now has got his teammate Jake Benham just ahead of him. Nathan, could Jake play a part in this championship fight? Well, I'm sure he did just then by making them all sit behind him. It seemed like he held them up. And now we can see Yano pass Jake Benham. When there's Yano, Jake is never far away, whether it's in front or behind. We can see battling going, as going on as well. We can see Jed and Valentin fighting for position. And Jed goes all the way off the circuit there as they're heading towards turn 12. And he gets a position back ahead. We'll see if that gets talked to the stewards afterwards. A bit more contact into the breaking zone as we see Thomas Ronhart into the pit lane. So we'll see where he comes out in this battle. Ooh, this could be an interesting one, Dan, for Ishmael Fassi. He could still be the one with the upper hand here. Yeah, Ishmael Fassi could still be in the title hunt heading into the final race of the season. If Jarno finishes on the podium today, then uh, he will still, he, I think he's guaranteed to win the championship uh, ahead of Ishmael Fassi. Of course, not relating to what uh, Thomas Ronhar can do. Meanwhile, Thomas is actually getting through on Jed Norgrove, thinning out the herd. He's getting now through up ahead of the Alpha Tower. He's got Valentin, Nico, then Jake on his hit list until he is on the back of Jana Watmir once again with slightly fresher medium tyres. Nicholas Longay all over the rear of Jake Benham and looking up the inside and towards turn number nine. Very close to contact between the pair of them. Nico finds the room. Jake Benham leaves him the space. That was a very nice overtake to get himself into P7 and splitting those two Mercedes. So Thomas Rahe is pushing like hell now to make some moves oh, in this race on that gap. And he's actually going to look to get ahead of Jake before they head down towards turn five. These so I believe, came to contact a couple of seasons back, didn't they, Danny? In, here Season in this 13. Corner. Absolutely. And now in towards turn number five. Is it going to be the same scenes we saw last season? Oh, not last season. Last time Thomas Ronhar was a title contender of this circuit. Doesn't look like it. Easy move for Thomas Ronhar. And the penalty for multiple warnings on the track limits. But look at this gap now. Nicholas Longe to the inside of Ikebena. Gets the move done for P5. And no one else is looking for moves. Actually, Thomas, uh, sorry, Yano, what me? We'll look for a move into towards turn six. But couldn't quite get it done. Went for a send. But was a little bit too far back as we saw yet again at the top. Luke Smith and Ishmael Fassi still changing the lead. And here comes Yana Watmir once again now in towards turn at number nine. We'll get through on Ikebena. And this is crucial that he once again puts a car in between himself and his championship rival. And that is exactly what he has done now. Thomas Ronhar, he's got to be very quick in making this move stick. As they head down to turn five and Ronhar's keen to get ahead. He wants to get ahead of Ika because look at this time. He's losing. He's, he's got a five, six, tenth gap to Yana Watmir now. As they head into turn five, he goes deep, gets that inside line. And I don't think there's much that Ika can do about that. No, there's not now. So Ronhar back. Onto your me hasn't got much more to worry about as I head into turn six, unless he can try and make a large send, which he's got to try he's and gain. again. Oh my word. the back of Thomas. Does he make a send into turn six? No. He backs off. Oh, Ikebeno, if he went for that move, I think he might have been the most popular man in the live chat. But uh, it wasn't meant to be. Ikebeno, really, though, being a thorn in the side of Thomas Ronhorn. No longer contractual teammates. Here's Nicholas Longay around the outside of Tamash Gal. And there it is, another move being made. Tamash Gal going to be losing a lot of time to all of these medium runners. And Thomas Ronhorn, once again, has to find the move 
on a slower car. Luckily, this time, Tamash Gao going to play that very nicely and allow for Thomas Ronhardt to slip up the inside. For P5, Nicholas Longay doing a nice job of holding that position. Here's Thomas Ronhardt looking now up the inside, now looking around the outside of turn number five. Jan Ortmir, they're side by side in towards that corner. Wheel to wheel off the exit. Who is going to get the better run? Thomas Ronhardt will have the slipstream of Nicholas Longay. The pair of them open up the DRS in tandem with one another. Jan Ortmir, a nose ahead. Here comes Nicholas Longay as well in the fight. Three wide between three WOR champions and Jan Ortmir will make that move and make his way into P4. Nicholas Longay losing out the biggest in all of that scenario but they're still going to continue along in towards turn number 9. Thomas Ronald looking to the inside of Jan Ortmir. Nothing the Flying Dutchman can do. No DRS for him there. Nicholas Longay soars around the outside of Jano just to make matters worse for him and all of a sudden Thomas Ronald in P4. Jan Ortmir down to P6. Nicholas Longay splitting the pair of them. Who takes it or will it be gone into the next train between if Ishmael, Thomas and Jano and actually Luke Smith's made a move ahead of, uh, of Ishmael sorry and that could be key because actually Ishmael might won that Dearest on the last lap oh what my word this is absolutely insane you cannot call it from any perspective here as Thomas Ronho is losing time to the leaders here comes Nicholas Longe closing to the back of the of the of the, oh, of the Salbert there's Jan Ortmir through on the pair of them wow Jan Ortmir up the inside and finds his way into P4 Nicholas Longe around the outside now on the inside of the corner Thomas Ronhardt still fighting his way into this battle Jan Ortmir into P5 but still they're wheel to wheel Ronhardt around the outside of his championship rival Jan Ortmir still wheel to wheel between the pair then they bang wheels heading in towards turn number 14 and 15 still side by side on Oh my word, how have they not come to blows? Jan Ormir is going to lose that position for the time being. They're still wheel to wheel on lap number 29, Nathan. What a battle. Absolutely superb between Jano and Thomas and Ney. Barry Burmand is here in this battle, but it's the final lap of the race. So anything that happens there is probably going to be final. They head down into turn five. They're all looking to go left, right, left, right to make moves into the break zone. And Thomas goes for a lunch. Couldn't get it to be done as Jano go went deep himself to save the move. They head yet again down towards turn six. Looking at the leaders. It's going to be Ishmael looking to get into the get himself ahead of Luke Smith. He gets the move done around the outside, but Luke's got the DRS heading down to turn nine. We look for the back can you oh, no, make a move ahead of Nico no we can't he says back Thomas also stuck behind and Dan all these roles fighting for now this is key this could be the end of the championship fight. Luke Smith is on the attack of Ishmael Fassi. This will end his hopes of winning the title here in Abu Dhabi. Luke Smith around the outside of Ishmael Fassi. And Ishmael holds on to that position there. What about Jan Ormir? He's still ahead. He's still ahead of Thomas Dronar. Now heading into the final few corners. What will happen? Ishmael Fassi might lose his position. Here comes Luke Smith around the outside and in towards the final few corners. Luke Smith, has he made this move stick? Still side by side, down the inside and towards turn number 16. Ishmael Fassi off the circuit as they come across the line. Luke Smith wins and Yano Amir in P5. He claims the season 16 WOR PC Tier 1 Championship. He's written his name in the history picks books once again. He's carved his name into that statue uh, outside the WOR arena. The chat is is going crazy. How has this race ended out this way? He is a three-time champion. He is the first ever back-to-back -back WOR champion.